Awesome, we're live. Let's get you started on advanced markers and Google Maps. My name is Joshua and I'm a developer at 28 East and we are the Google Maps partners of Africa. In this video, I'd like to show you guys how to get started with a Google Map and an advanced marker. Um, and so for some, you are going to need some HTML, some JavaScript and some CSS knowledge to get started. But feel free to pause along with this video to make it easier to follow along. Um, Awesome, let's share my screen. As you can see here, we're starting with an empty HTML page, an empty JavaScript page, and an empty CSS page. Now, you'll notice that I'm working on port 5500, or you can just open up your index.html. Um, and if you open up the page at this current state, this is what you'll see. So. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is link our CSS and our JavaScript to this HTML, and then load the JavaScript library or the script library for um, the Google Maps import library. And this is going to give us access to advanced markers and the Google Map. The next thing we have is a empty div with an ID of map. Um, and this is where we're going to put our map object into. Um, it's cool. Let's save that. The next thing we're going to do is get started on our CSS. Um, as you can see, we're giving uh, the, the map div. So we're targeting the ID of the map um, of that div with this hashtag map. Um, we're giving it a height of 100%. And the same thing for our HTML and our body. If we do not do this, the map will not render. It needs to have a height variable. Let's save that. Now, let's get started on the JavaScript, which is where the actual backbone of this entire project starts. Um, first thing we're going to do is instantiate a variable for map. Um, and we're going to give this a let so that it can um, take up the whole, it can, it can be used throughout the project. Um, and it's somewhere that we can store our map object inside of because we're going to use it somewhere else later. Next thing we're doing is starting a function. And in this function, we're going to um, call on the Google Maps library and assign a constant variable of map. And we're going to use this map because it's a constructor for the Google Map object. Um, and we're going to let our map variable equal to that new map object that we're creating. Now, the map object takes in two um, kind of parameters. The first parameter is the element that you're going to be rendering the map into. And this is that document.getElementID map, which is targeting the ID of this div, div right here. And the next thing it's doing is um, kind of some options that we're passing to the map. So we're passing a map ID to the map, and we're passing a zoom level and a center. Now, this center is somewhere in Johannesburg. Oh, sorry. And the last thing we're doing is that we're running the enet map function so that this thing actually triggers. And if we save all of this, we should now have a Google map. There we go. Look at that. Cool. From there, what we're going to do is instantiate a marker variable. Um, and this marker variable is where we're going to put our marker object inside of. This is now the advanced marker that we're talking about. So next thing is we're creating a function that's called handle marker. And this is going to handle our marker in a sense. So, if this marker variable is empty, like it is here, we're going to call on the Google Maps import library, call on the marker library, and from that, grab the advanced marker element, which is a constructor for an advanced marker kind of class. So here's that marker, and we're saying, let this marker equal to the new marker that we're creating. Um, marker, the advanced marker element takes into one parameter, and that's an object. And inside this object, there are very important um, parameters that need to be there. First is the map variable, which is telling the marker what map to render on. Next is the position variable, which is telling the marker at what position to render at. Without these two um, variables um, being filled in, as in giving it a marker and a position, or a map and a position, then the marker will not display on the map. Um, we're going to make this marker draggable. Don't worry too much about the z-index for now. It's not important. If there is a marker, so as you can see, we're assigning this marker variable to this new marker object. 
Um, if that marker does exist, then we're simply changing the marker position. Cool. Um, let's get this working. If I save now, nothing is going to happen. Nothing will change on our map because we're not doing anything. If I click or do anything like that, nothing's going to happen. So let's make something happen. Now, next thing we're doing is we're adding an on-click listener to this map. So we're saying map.addListener click. Now, this click event, there is an event that will run every single time you click on this map. Uh, there are There is a long list of events on the Google Map documentation that you can play around with. But for now, we're just using the click. And that um, event takes a asynchronous function. And this, or any function for that matter, and that event then returns some data. And inside this data, we're calling on the lat long and the lat position and the long position. We're creating a position object from that and then passing it to the handle marker. The handle marker will then take in this position, check if the marker exists or not. If it doesn't exist, create the new marker. And if it does exist, simply change the position. So let's save and see what happens. Boom, if I click on the map, we now have a marker. It's draggable and clickable. Um, there are many more things you can do with this. The Google Map is a, the Google Maps kind of world is massive and large, and there are many ways to play around with the Google Map. Um, and I'll show you that in later videos. Thank you for listening. Also, you are going to need a Google API key for this. Without a Google API key, none of this will work. And I will be deleting this key after the video. Um, you can find one on the Cloud Console, create a billing account, all those nice steps. Cool. Thank you so much for your time, guys. And that's me.